Are the American people afraid? Let me be more specific. Are the American people afraid of their own history? So there are a lot of American people. Yeah, right. And I think, um, you know, in the last five years uh, since the 1619 Project, I clearly have spent a lot of time thinking about people who want to embrace a better understanding of history and those who don't. I do think that there is a minority, a very significant minority in this country that is afraid of um, not just learning the truth, but if we tell a more truer version of this history, what it says about them and the power that they wield. Um, I always think it's important to talk about what, what are we actually saying when we say history, because we, as lay people, tend to think of history as, well, this happened on this date and this is who did it. But oftentimes what we're talking about when we say history is memory, we're talking about what is the collective stories that we have all been told that shape our collective understanding of our society. And I think so many of those stories have been told to justify power, to justify uh, the idea of who we are as Americans. Um, and I do think that people who are particularly nationalistic are afraid to learn a more truer version of history. Um, but I don't think that's most Americans. I think that what I have experienced in the years since the 1619 Project published, and even prior to the 1619 Project, all of my work engaged history. When I was writing about school segregation, I was tracing back sometimes to the 1800s to, to help us understand how we got, got here. And what I heard again and again from people is first a disbelief, right? I think that's the initial response is this can't be true because I would have known this by now. And you get defensive, right? If you've bought into these myths and then suddenly you are learning that these are myths, the first response is disbelief or anger or defensiveness. But then I tend to see that people um, embrace it, right? They feel empowered by having this knowledge. And that's actually what folks who are trying to ban books, who are passing legislation against the 1619 Project, against what they call critical race theory, that's what they're afraid of. Because if, if many Americans didn't want to learn this history, there'd be no need to ban it. Right? It, it is that people are engaging with it, that it is transformative. And just one quick example of that. Uh, during 2020, which were labeled by some the 1619 riots, right? The George Floyd riots were called the 1619 riots, which I actually was a little proud of, but... Um, <laughs> um, what you saw during the George Floyd protests, and it wasn't just because of the 1619 projects, there were a lot of texts coming out at that period that were really examining for popular readers um, the history of race in this country. You saw people making these connections that you hadn't seen necessarily before in mass, that, that typically when someone gets killed by the police, we've looked at it many white Americans especially I'm talking to, would look at it like this one bad officer did this thing to this one black man and it's not related to anything else. And of course, black folks look at this as this is just one more incident uh, in a larger pattern, in a larger history. But in 2020, you began to see large numbers of non-black Americans who were saying, this was not about this one officer. A society creates that moment. A society creates a moment where an officer can kneel on a black man for nine minutes knowing he's being filmed and not worry that he'd ever have to pay a consequence for that. But that's not just about that man. And that's when you started to see the bans. Mm -hmm. It became very dangerous. At, at one time, uh, something like 45% of uh, self-described Republicans were saying that race was a primary obstacle, racism, a primary, primary obstacle to black advancement. Now we know Republicans are individual responsibility. If there is racism, it's just individuals being racist, that they were making these connections uh, required a response. So I don't think most Americans are afraid of history, but I do think we've all been collectively lied to. And I think that that can be a hard thing to reckon with is, I hear all the time, well, I'm, very, I, I'm educated, I have multiple degrees, I read all the time, how come no one ever taught me this? And that um, revelation is actually what the book banners and, and, and those who are trying to ban the ability to think and learn about these ideas are afraid of. Because once you make that revelation, that's what transforms how you think about policy. 
right? That's what transforms what laws you think should be passed, who you think should be leaders. And that's where the real power of narrative is. I mean, that's why we're both storytellers. Well, and, and I think this, your, your comment about power is central to our Americans afraid of things yes. because there's, you asked if the American people were afraid of their history. And I'm with you. I think most Americans actually want the ground under their feet. But you can use history mm -hmm. in such a way that you can skew it to garner power. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that speaks directly to the fact that, you know, our textbooks read the way they did for as long as they did, and that, and that even still none of you know anything about Grover Cleveland because it was Harrison's people who wrote the, the, first, tech, the first textbooks mm -hmm. about the late 19th century. And, um, and that use of our history to garner power is, in this moment, I think, a, a direct attempt to, um, to create what I would call authoritarian history that says there was a perfect past that we can go back to if only we can get rid of those people mm -hmm. versus the idea of democratic history, which says, listen, we're going to screw it up because we always do. But we have agency. That's mm -hmm. right. So if you look, for example, at the Florida curriculum that got such attention or the Oklahoma curriculum, what it really erased, it erased indigenous history entirely, Asian history. Um, there's a little bit of black history in it. But what, and labor, pff, that was out the window. But what it really erased was agency. Mm -hmm. You could not read those texts, any of them, and say, I could do that. I could challenge authority. What you could see was that authorities were setting up this perfect world that you would be lucky to participate in.